So, welcome to this lecture on VHDL and the course uh, digital system design with uh, PLDs and FPGAs. In the last lecture uh, we have seen uh, a structural model of uh, coding in VHDL. Then we looked at the different kinds of simulation and we have taken uh, uh, looked at uh, how at least in timing simulation uh, the simulator try to resolve the concurrency um, by looking at the sequentially written state concurrent statement. So, let us quickly run through the slide uh, before we get into today's um, uh, lecture. So, um, this is what uh, we have looked at in, in a, when you have a structural coding which is used for kind of top down design. You have a top level entity with names and uh, the ports. This is composed of some interconnection of components. So, you need to declare in the architecture declaration region the various components used that basically a name again the input output port and various internal signal and in the statement region we instantiate distinct components as required and interconnect them. So, we somehow show a netlist uh, that is what we have seen. We have taken the same equality comparator as example uh, though in real life uh, you do not need to do you do not do a structural coding for such a small circuit. Uh, one statement is enough, one concurrent statement is enough. Here uh, the, the components are the two input XOR gate and four input AND gate and uh, there are four internal signals. So, we are going to declare these two components this signal and in the statement region um, uh, describe the netlist. So, that is what is shown here. Uh, this is a library entity in the architecture declaration region we are declaring the XNOR component with its port and for component with the ports for internal signal. And the statement region uh, we are forming this netlist by uh, instantiating uh, and forming the real uh, formal to actual pin mapping that means I1 is mapped to A3, um, I2 is mapped to B3 and O1 is mapped to IN1 and so on for all the four components and this is called positional association the, the formal and actuals are uh, associated in a positional way and ultimately you have to uh, sometimes somebody has to describe the components. Maybe it is done before it is in a library, it is in a different project or it is in the same project in a different file and so on. But this shows the component uh, definition uh, the entity for XNOR architecture similarly for the AND gate. Once this is done the structural coding is com complete you can simulate it, you can synthesize it and I said about the positional association which is very difficult in a complex case uh, to remember the order of the ports particularly when you put a, a, this into a library. Um, it is enough uh, if you like normally people say what are the input and output port what are the data types. So, a convenient way of associating is to explicitly give the formal to actual mapping. So, one need not kind of uh, keep any order you specify what is the formal parameter uh, which is defined in the component and what is actual actual signal which it, which it is mapped. So, that is what is shown here. So, it is very convenient way of doing it and we have also seen if you properly define the signal you can get a concise code. In this case we have defined the internal signal as a vector which allows one to rewrite um, the, the earlier instantiation in a kind of uh, in a very uh, symmetric way. So, A3, B3 in end of 3 comes and then one proceed to write a generate loop uh, which captures this four statement ok. So, uh, for I in 0 to 3 generate and this port map A of I, B of I, end of I and this is not a loop in a conventional sense it is um, it is literally replicated four times ok. So, whenever there is symmetry you think of defining the signal properly writing the uh, 
uh, instantiation properly so that this can work out. It is not that you need to write this way and then rewrite this way, but then uh, you, you, you put it down then you see the trend and you can write it and I you can write a, a, a kind of ripple order as an example and uh, this can work not only for the component instantiation you can write concurrent statements um, like uh, if you have a um, uh, kind of uh, full order you can write the equation for the full order and that can be in a generate loop that will be replicated that is possible and whenever you instantiate a component a particular output is not used you have to say open and do not leave any inputs uh, hanging. So, unused input should be tied to the appropriate level for uh, the active uh, kind of uh, to make the input active. In the case of AND gate it has to be 1 and OR gate it is 0 and we have looked at different types of simulation. Um, I am assuming that you would have done some kind of spy simulation. In that case this is the system you are simulating you give an input and you get the output. In spice you have a waveform and uh, being an analog signal it is divided into uh, intervals and for each interval the computation is done and wherever there is more detail is required there will be you know kind of narrow intervals and nothing can be ignored actually the, the, the more the interval the better the accuracy it of course depends on the, uh, the system uh, time constants and so on. Um, but and, and also the, uh, the input signal it depends on both and but in digital uh, scenario you have say two signals like there is no point in uh, dividing the whole range into minute intervals uh, small intervals because you know that uh, a signal changes here then it remains everything remains steady till the next uh, change. So, we need to the simulator need to look uh, uh, do the computation only when the signal change and that is called event driven simulation a new event will trigger the computation. Event can be on inputs or internal signal um, within the circuit and in specific when you have a sequential circuit this is updated every clock cycle. So, uh, in principle you can do the simulation the computation on the active clock edge which will definitely kind of uh, ignore some details uh, but this is this is a very fast way of uh, simulating the sequential circuit and we have also have discussed the notion of simulation time is not the real time is not the time uh, the simulator takes to do the computation it is a that the time at which the event happens and I as I said normally the events are ordered very sequentially. Suppose there was an event at the input at 100 nanosecond, 110 nanosecond, 120 nanosecond. Then uh, the simulation start with 100 nanosecond, uh, completes it and then moves to the next simulation time and so on okay. And in between for the computation at a particular simulation time might take any uh, duration of time that is not uh, the, the concern as, as far as this uh, terminology is concerned. But definitely one would like uh, to speed up the simulation. Um, so, the algorithms are important, the CAD algorithms used for simulation is very important. And also uh, you should know that events are ordered uh, in, a, in, a, in sequence. Uh, suppose there was an event at 100 nanosecond and 110 nanosecond. The computation of the event at 100 nanosecond changes an internal signal at 1 or 2 nanosecond. Then that event need to be inserted between 100 and 110 nanosecond properly. So, as the computation happens new event occurs because of the computation that is appropriately ordered properly in the, in the, in the time sequence. Uh, so, that 1 by 1 it is ha handled that is how the simulation proceeds and you can work out you can think of what happens in real time uh, work yourself out and convince yourself and um, you know grasp that concept. And simulation cycle is basically resolving the concurrency by sequential computation and uh, there is also a terminology called delta delay we will see that and uh, this is how 
uh, the last uh, part of the lecture in the last class we have looked at a case of a timing simulation and a b is uh, producing an x through an n gate x and c is producing y through x nor gate. But the issue was that this is written in the opposite direction that the data flow is from here to here and if the simulator handles this from top to bottom y will get the old value because x is not yet updated and x will get the new value. So, if it goes from top to bottom and as I said there could be multiple statement in any order. So, systematically handling it is that whenever there is an event on a particular signal uh, the simulator looks at the right hand side of the assignment and you can view this as something like a sensitivity list in the process. So, uh, if an event happens on a x is computed and x is assigned after say if it is a is at 100 nanosecond x will get an assignment after at 103 nanosecond. So, at 100 nanosecond if all the computations are over the simulation time is moved to the next event that is 103 nanosecond. So, look for x on the right hand side then x comes here. So, the y is computed and assigned after 10 at 108 nanosecond. Since there is nothing more to compute at 103 the simulation times move to 108 nanosecond. At that point there is nothing to compute because y does not come on the right hand side of any assignment everything becomes stable that is how it proceeds. So, it proceeds in two steps here and um, that is what is shown in the in the table at uh, 0 nanosecond the a b was 1 1. So, x was 1 c was 0. So, y was 0, but then a goes to 0 at 103 at 100 nanosecond and that trigger a computation which gets an assignment on x. Uh, at 103 nanosecond a change which triggers a computation on y that assignment happens at 108 nanosecond and that stabilizes the whole uh, business ok. So, that is how the, uh, the simulation cycle happens. Now, uh, basically it is resolving the concurrency uh, from the concurrent statement uh, it may be in any order it may not match the flow of the data. Um, it is solution is event driven computation looks for event at the right hand side and keep computing. And if there is a feedback you might ask a question what happens if there is a feedback no issue you keep computing if you are lucky it will be uh, or if the simulator is lucky it will stabilize otherwise it will go on there is there is no way uh, simulator can do anything. Suppose you can think of an inverter its output is connected to the input at least in simulation it can be done and it, it keeps on if you give a delay of 5 nanosecond it will generate a clock clock of period 10 nanosecond you know it in, but that is not way to synthesize is kind of oscillator. But uh, you can uh, in for simulation you can make a clock by you know connecting the inverter output to the inverter input with a certain delay uh, that will generate a clock waveform and we use that for uh, test benches and so on. Uh, so, let us move on as I said so there could be oscillation, but um, if there is oscillation it keeps happening and, um, and the simulator does not know whether it is intended or not intended because when you generate a clock it is intended if there is a mistake it is not intended. So, uh, simulator has no way to know whether it is the right one or the wrong one. So, let us move uh, this is the timing simulation, but let us come to the uh, today's part which is the logic simulation or functional simulation. The, the circuit is same A B uh, through an AND gate produces X, X and C produces Y through an X, X or gate ok. But you see here and um, the Y is written first this is written first x is written later as I said if it if you give it to synthesis tool absolutely no problem it will generate the circuit because whichever order you write does not matter because you say y z nor x yes x is a and b. So, that is created, but for simulator uh, the order is not matching and we said there is no issue look at the right hand side and compute 
you know like if there is an event on A at 100 nanosecond look at the right hand side and compute. But in this case in the earlier case uh, that delay that delay close helped us to keep the sequence like in this case the 100 uh, there was an event on A at 100 then x changed in response to that at 103 nanosecond. So, and uh, because of change in x the y changed at 108 nanosecond. So, there was this delay allowed us to kind of derive the sequence properly, but in this case there is no delay ok. So, a changes at 100 nanosecond, but x is also changing at 100 nanosecond. And if you look at this y is also changing at 100 nanosecond and that you know if you write uh, you are writing the software for the, the simulator there is an issue because a changes at 100 nanosecond now simulation time is 100 nanosecond then x is changed at 100 nanosecond and simulator come back to 100 nanosecond uh, uh, you know there is an issue ok because everything is at 100, 100 nanosecond. So, the trouble here was that there is no delay. So, the solution is just add a delay ok uh, at least conceptually the, there are many ways to handle it, but uh, like you, you just add a delay some delta delay and we say there is an event at 100 nanosecond x is assigned at x plus delta delay. So, now x plus delta is greater than uh, you know uh, sorry under plus delta is greater than um, so event happens on a at 100 nanosecond x is assigned at 100 plus delta na delta. Now, 100 plus delta is greater than 100 and maybe less than even the, the smallest one 101 nanosecond. So, that is squeezed in between 100 and the next event. So, next simulation time will be under plus delta. So, this is computed and then the y is assigned at 100 plus 2 delta ok. So, when everything then you look for the right hand side there is nothing to do it is stabilized at that point delta is made 0. So, you get correctly uh, the x and y uh, there is no issue. So, you get 0 delay simulation or the logic simulation function simulation by adding an extra delay uh, everything is solved. So, that is what is shown here. So, in the textbook you will see a delta delay uh, some for some people it is confusing and um, it is it's not a big deal and uh, it is very simple. So, if we have uh, at uh, 0 nanosecond a and b are 1 at 100 nanosecond a is changing from 1 to 0 that uh, trigger a computation on x, x is um, assigned at 100 plus delta. So, I have not written uh, instead of going to the equation editor I just put the d, but it is the uh, take it as delta 100 plus delta and x is moving from 1 to 0. So, the simulation time moves from 100 plus 100 to 100 plus delta and this is computer which is assigned and 100 plus 2 delta and the simulation time moves to this there is nothing to compute. So, everything is stable then delta becomes 0 and at 100 nanosecond you get a now a waveform which was 1 1 uh, like the y was 0 then y moved to 1 ok and a moves from 1 to 0 everything happens at 100 nanosecond um, with no delay uh, neatly. Um, so, that is what is shown here uh, you know in the picture a is going from 1 to 0 at 100 nanosecond and under, under plus delta x is going from 1 to 0 under plus 2 delta y is going from 0 to 1 and uh, ultimately delta is made 0. So, you can see a goes at 100 nanosecond and y goes from 0 to 1 at the same time. Now, there is one uh, thing you have to keep in mind the delta cycle is uh, you know used by the simulator to kind of keep this the proper sequence in computation ok. So, you do not have to worry. So, you you just write the statement it is a simulator's uh, way of resolving the sequence by adding the delta delta delay ok delta cycle it is not too much relevant in the synthesis when you write a code uh, I have seen students uh, get caught up in this delta cycle ok. Now, delta cycle is not a magic 
uh, by which you can create different behavior, different uh, circuits and so on. So, um, you do not worry too much about the delta cycle and say uh, this assignment happens after the delta cycle. So, what circuit you get? Nothing you know you, you write the statement uh, which we are going to see what uh, the statement means as far as synthesis is concerned. You stick to that rule uh, do not worry about how the simulator uh, you know resolve the concurrency by a delta cycle because if you get caught it has some implication in the synthesis definitely we will discuss that. But is not a uh, I mean when you write a code uh, the last thing you should be worried about should be something about the delta cycle that is for the simulator to resolve the concurrency and it is a concept it is, uh, I mean the simulator need not stick to this to keep track of the sequence basically you have to keep the sequence of computation uh, in in the real in the in the simulation time sequence. Uh, so, this is one way of resolving it there could be other way of resolving it. So, please do not worry when you write a code uh, think about the circuit think about uh, what a concurrent statement uh, mean and that we are going to handle uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, I will teach you very clearly uh, how uh, each statement means what it means as far as combination circuit is concerned as far as sequence circuit is concerned. So, do not worry this is for understanding how the simulator resolve the concurrency ok. So, let us move on. Um, so, a an intelligent student will ask yes what happens um, when there is a feedback. So, let us look at uh, the feedback scenario just for clarity there is nothing new per se, but then let us look at it um, ok. Now, maybe um, there is one question if you uh, before that feedback thing uh, like really suppose you are a, a CAD tool is trying to implement this delta delay how small should be the uh, this delta delay because ultimately if you are trying to resolve this concurrency by delta delay you have to give some value how small it should be. So, definitely it has to be smaller than any uh, gate delay because suppose you are giving a, a signal is changed at 100 nanosecond and um, the output of that gate changes at 101 nanosecond and you cannot have a delta delay which is 2 nanosecond because then the when you order this the kind of events it will not be proper. So, it has to be smaller than any gate delay uh, any uh, any delay in this in the real circuit if you are working with an FPGA which has a 1 nanosecond as a basic delay the delta delay has to be specified or internally by the simulator smaller than that. Also you are specifying uh, the input signal to the simulator which has some resolution maybe uh, you are specifying that A changes at 100 nanosecond then 101 nanosecond and so on. The minimal uh, kind of uh, resolution uh, you specify the input is at uh, order of 1 nanosecond then definitely the delta also has to be smaller than that. Otherwise again uh, when uh, the events are ordered it will the ordering will not be proper because un delta is 2 nanosecond then which was supposed to come before 101 nanosecond will not happen that has to be smaller than the smallest change in the, in the input signal. So, that has to be kept in mind. So, let us look at the, uh, the case with the feedback scenario. Uh, I have shown a very simple circuit a cross couple NAND gate uh, please have a look at it. So, you have a, a cross couple NAND latch and as you know that uh, for the NAND latch the input is active low ok and when suppose you want to set this then you make it 0 and this 1 this 0 will force the output to be 1 and this 1 and 1 will make this 0 and it comes and reinforces then uh, it can go to the memory mode um, 1 1 it will, it will be memory mode. If you force both 0 to 1 1 there is a raise. So, 
uh, it is kind of the, the when it comes back to memory it is undefined. So, um, uh, you do not do that. So, the uh, set is 0 1 reset is 1 0 and the memory is 1 1 ok. So, let us look at this. So, here uh, we are writing z as r nan y r nan y and y as s nan z. So, uh, here there is since there is a feedback um, there is no order you know there is anything everything is messy um, whether you write y first or z first since there is a cross coupling uh, everything is as bad as uh, anything. So, let us look at it ok. So, uh, assume that at time 0 the it is in reset the, the latch is reset that means s is 1 r is 0 because r is active low. So, y is 0 this is 0 and z is 1. So, let us move from reset to set ok. So, you know that uh, this was 1 0 now it is moved to 0 1. So, both s and r changes at 100 nanosecond ok. Now, 2 signals are changing you know. So, that is good it adds some complexity. So, but you see on the right hand side s comes here r comes here. So, simulator has to compute both um, uh, z and y at 100 nanosecond. But you see let us take the z that r is changing at 100 nanosecond uh, z is nothing but r nan y. So, it is 1 nan 0 ok which is nothing but uh, 1. So, z is 1. So, at uh, for this 100 nanosecond change z does not change z was already 1. So, this makes no effect, but if you look at the s nan z s is 0 nan z is 0 nan 1 which is 1 because any 0 is 1 out output is 1 y was 0. So, there is a change in y. So, the y is assigned at 100 plus delta, but now we have the simulator has computed both. Uh, 100 nanosecond events the simulation times move to 100 plus delta. So, there is an event on y. So, this need to be computed which is nothing but r nan y. So, that is nothing but 1 nan 1 which is 0. So, z is changed from 1 to 0 which is assigned at 100 plus 2 delta. Now, since 100 plus delta computation is over move to 100 plus 2 delta z is going from 1 to 0 again y need to be computed. So, that is nothing but s nan z. So, 0 nan 0 which is 1. So, y was already 1 there is no need to compute everything is stabilized. Now, the delta can be made 0 then you get 100. So, s goes from 1 to 0 r goes from 0 to 1 and y goes from 0 to 1 and z goes from 1 to 0. So, that is shown in the picture. Um, this was 1 0 which is going from 1 0 to 0 1 at 100 nanosecond under plus delta y goes uh, to 1 under plus 2 delta z goes to 0. Ultimately when you make it 0 uh, uh, the y goes to 0 to 1 z go to 1 to 0 at 100 nanosecond. So, it was in a kind of reset mode it goes to set mode uh, at the same time. So, uh, there is no issue actually absolutely no issue. Um, whenever there is a feedback two things can happen one is that it it stabilizes it converges or it oscillates uh, in either case uh, this has no issue with the feedback. So, uh, this kind of delta cycle concept handle uh, the feedback also feedback scenario also that 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 is what is uh, shown here. So, uh, solution is to keep uh, uh, computing till everything becomes stable if at all otherwise it goes on and on and on ok. Now, so that is what is we have seen now very um, quick uh, recapture uh, we have seen how uh, the, the kind of uh, like event driven simulation event driven computation um, resolve the concurrency. Uh, in the case of no delay we add a conceptual very small delay delta delay which keep track of the sequence of computation. And if there is a feedback there is no issue 
depending on the events the computation continues two cases it oscillates or it becomes stable ok. So, now let us come back to the, the process and when I mentioned the process I said that uh, to implement a circuit ok. Uh, uh, so, look at the slide uh, we have uh, this scenario here uh, A B is driving an AND gate, AND gate output is X along with C D and X NOR gate drives Y and along with E and F it drives Z through an AND gate ok. Now, uh, I said that to write a process for the, like assume that this is a block uh, to write a process for you put all the uh, internal signal um, uh, sorry all the input signal in the sensitivity list and we write the statements ok. Now, uh, we could have written everything in single statement, but to illustrate um, uh, this idea I have assigned I have written a statement for x. Um, like using some if case or something like that uh, or you just write sequential assignment. So, x is written as a function of a b essentially a and b y is a uh, function of c d x x nor you know and z is uh, a function of e f and y. Now, you see that we are writing it in the proper order, but you look at it if an event happens on a. Uh, see how the simulator you know the we are talking about the simulation uh, there is an event on A which is in the sensitivity list. So, the, the rule is that it goes from top to bottom once ok. Now, you know that there is an event on A. So, this x is computed, but x is assigned suppose event happens at 100 nanosecond x get that value at 100 plus delta uh, nanosecond, but when it comes to y uh, the value of x used is that of 100 nanosecond not 100 plus delta nanos, nanosecond because uh, the current simulation time is 100 nanosecond. So, the va y is computed using the old value of x similarly z is computed using the old value of y it does not matter you know as I said we have written it in the proper order but you see that x get the correct value y and z does not get it at all. Now, that means there was an event on x um, this process has not responded to it. So, we know how to make a process respond to an event on a particular signal that has to be in the sensitivity list. So, the solution is to write x and y the internal signal in the sensitivity list. Then what happens in the first uh, time an event happens on A, uh, it goes from top to bottom there is a change in x which is assigned at 100 plus delta. Once it is completed there is nothing more to do at 100 nanosecond. So, the simulation time goes to 100 plus delta. So, if x is specified this is computed again and y gets updated. Now, in the next iteration there is an 100 plus 2 delta even and that if y is there it will trigger and z is updated. So, um, the rule is that uh, when you have internal signal uh, you need not write I mean you could write you could think of writing z uh, as a function of uh, a b c d f directly you know you could you could as well write z is nothing but a and b x or z and d like the proper bracket. Uh, uh, you know and E and F you can write as a single statement then you, you have no internal signal we need not this works. But when whenever there is an internal signal for proper simulation to happen you have to put internal signal in the sensitivity list of the process that is what I said uh, please keep that in mind. So, earlier we stated that you just write the input signal in the sensitivity list that is not enough you have to write the the, the internal signal, but um, I waited for this delta cycle business to be handled. Then if I state that that will become clear that is why this is handled later. So, basically this is what I am stating uh, in response to an event on any of the inputs the process compute from top to bottom. Even if the uh, order of the statement match the flow of the data uh, the 
the all the values used is of the current simulation time this newly assigned value uh, does not affect the computation in the subsequent step. Uh, so, uh, you have to put them in the sensitivity list that is what is stated here. So, the correct usage is that in this case you have to put a b c d e f and x and y in the sensitivity list and then everything works it iterates uh, 3 times and everything is updated properly. Uh, now you see that uh, there is a kind of um, equivalence uh, uh, as far as simulator is concerned the processes and concurrence statement because whenever there is an event on the sensitivity list signals in the sensitivity list the process computer. If you have a concurrent statement in the earlier case uh, whenever there is an event on the right hand side of the assignment this happens ok. So, uh, basically you can think of you take this concurrent statement you can write it as a process process with the, the R and Y in the sensitivity list and you write a sequential assignment. Similarly, it is possible that when you have a process you can write multiple concurrent statement equivalent multiple concurrent statement to. So, there is an equivalence between the processes and the concurrent statement that is what I want to, to say. A concurrent statement is equivalent to a process with signal in the uh, right hand side of the, the, the concurrent statement in sensitivity list. So, you take uh, a concurrent statement you can write equivalent processes um, uh, like um, all the uh, this is stating about uh, the sensitivity list internal signal in the sensitivity list even if um, the order is kind of met and we could like if you have a process you can break it into equal and concurrent statement and you should remember this fact in real life you may have say 4 processes and 10 concurrent statement everything is concurrent to each other like processes are sequential bodies, but all processes all concurrent statements are concurrent. If a particular event happens uh, wherever that uh, signal is on the right hand side of assignment and sensitivity list of a process that gets computed at that same simulation time. So, that you should remember that processes and concurrent statement are concurrent to each other and depending on the event. Uh, everything is computed at the same simulation time a uh, lot of computation like if uh, uh, an event happens at 100 nanosecond simulator may have to compute some 10 processes and 15 concurrent statement uh, depending on the complexity of the description or complexity of the, the circuit. So, that should be kept in mind. So, uh, that was about synthesis sorry simulation. Now, let us come to briefly very briefly we will take it later when we discuss a concurrent statement. Look at this statement this is what we have written for equality comparator uh, which say that equal get 1 when a is equal to b l 0. Now, you think how this can be synthesized ok. Uh, think of a mechanism by which anything you write any at least for a now think of a combination circuit do not worry about the sequential circuit. Think of a combination do not worry how the uh, what is the VHDL code for a flip flop and so on uh, that we will handle. But for a combination circuit you write some statement what is the, the like uh, a sure way of uh, synthesizing like we have this statement uh, uh, like you come out with a scheme which will work for any statement ok. So, let us come back to the slide think for a while you know I will give you a little time just think uh, how um, you know efficiently how a um, sure way of synthesizing this please think about it for a moment. So, I can give a hint um, like you think of how did you design a combination circuit um, like in the basic codes you know you have some 
description uh, like somebody say in words uh, this is the scenario and how do you generate how do you design a combination circuit and you know that uh, from the description uh, verbal description you would have written a truth table. So uh, like 100% sure way of synthesizing from a description is to write a truth table. So in this case at least in our case we had two input signal each of which is 4 bit like we have a of 3 to a of 0, b of 3 to b of 0 these are the two inputs equal is a 1 bit. So make a truth table input versus output. So we have a3, a2, a1, a0, b3, b2, b1, b0 this is the input part the equal is uh, the output part and there are so this is 8 bit. So you have you can imagine there are 2 raised to 8 rows and we know that when uh, wherever uh, this A pattern and B pattern match we write 1 rest all places it is it is made 0 okay. And uh, then um, as you know the, the, the tool should synthesis tool should make an equation wherever there is uh, pick the min terms and minimize it and so on okay. It looks uh, uh, very nice it works for all the cases but then you can imagine what happens I say that instead of A3 down to 0 I suppose I say A15 down to 0 okay. So the moment I say that 15 down to 0 then you have A15 to A0, B15 to B0 there are uh, 32 values and uh, the, the number of rows in this tooth table will be 2 raised to 32 which is 4 gig and uh, you can imagine if synthesis tool is trying to make such a tooth table in the memory and maybe you have a 2 gigabyte physical memory it has to use uh, the virtual memory properly if there is no virtual memory then the system can crash. Uh, so I maybe I am exaggerating but you see that uh, a very simple solution uh, has uh, does not work here it uses a lot of memory and so because of exponential complexity of the, uh, the, the, the digital case where the min terms it goes exponentially complex. So uh, most synthesis tools uh, does not build truth tables okay. So it is as you would have guessed when the synthesis tool this see this operator equal operator this operator is written in a proper way uh, to reflect this uh, circuit of XNOR gate or XOR gate okay. Now so uh, when uh, the internally the operator is implemented using the XOR gate. So it is called operator inferencing the synthesis tool try to look at the operator and the operators are uh, returned with exclusive OR gates already. So that is how it is synthesized. So similarly if somebody write A plus B it is not that uh, a truth table of the adder is written and you end up with a carry lookahead adder or something like that. Uh, the plus is implemented in a simple way as a ripple adder. Similarly you have a, you write X plus 1 then this is replaced by an incrementer. So basically the synthesis works on uh, you know the standard structures uh, of the operators like it, it heavily depends on uh, to, to you know catch the operator which is used and the equivalent circuit which is written in the library for that particular operator that is how the synthesis works. So that this kind of uh, impossible situation is not reached uh, but at times when um, the synthesis tool can resort to this and where things can go wrong when it cannot make sense out of what you have written or it cannot guess the correct operator uh, then uh, things can go wrong okay. So that is how the synthesis happen and as we move along when, it, when we come to the statements then we will see how it happens. So uh, that is what I uh, talked about the synthesis. So please keep that in mind then we come to this uh, part which is a little bit boring but for completion sake I will run through it and um, the, the, the VHDL is very properly defined 
um, the syntax is very what to say very precise and we have four classes of uh, four classes constants signals variables and files and you know that in a normal language you have constant variables and files but we have being hardware we have signals which we extensively use and syntax uh, for all classes are you write what is a class then give a name of the object an instance of a class is an object. So a game name for an object and what is the data type. So you might say constant width integer and so on ok. So that is uh, the syntax and if you look at the C code maybe this class is not specified in some cases that is implicit in the case of variable but here it is explicitly stated. So let us look at the signal class signals. Um, signals are basically declared in the architecture declaration region and it, it can be used everywhere. It can be used in architecture, statement region, processes, functions and procedure. Uh, the syntax is signal, a name and the data type. So here we I write signal carry standard logic vector 7 down to 0. Uh, similarly constant. Uh, constant are is used for readability and easy modification. So we can define a keyword is constant, a name, width and then what is the data type integer. Since integer can take any value we have to kind of we are saying uh, uh, what is the value here the 8. So the wherever the width is used suppose you are defining a counter then you can define the counter output in terms of the width you can say. Uh, counter output is width minus 1 down to 0 ok. So uh, you can come and change you know it is an 8 bit counter now you just change this to uh, kind of 16 then you get a 16 bit counter that is use of it. So the variables, uh, variables cannot be declared in architecture declaration region it can be declared only in the sequential bodies like process, functions and procedure. And this is used in simulation extensively it is used for indexing, uh, temporary storage and all that. Uh, for synthesis uh, it is not very well defined in non-trivial cases ok. Now this is uh, it is not that you know sometime people say uh, make statement like variables are not synthesizable. It is not true like uh, you take a symbol. Uh, you know uh, combination circuit and you try to reply uh, the, the, the signals with variable everything works fine. What I mean in the non-trivial case is that suppose you take an algorithm a standard algorithm uh, which is written in C code using variable and try to bring that into VHDL and try to implement it you may not get an equivalent circuit which does that uh, business that is the meaning of. Uh, that is what uh, what is supposed to be the meaning of uh, when somebody say the variables are not synthesizable ok. Whether the person who says knows or not I do not know but these are a very blanket statement which sometimes people make and uh, there is nothing kind of philosophical about it um, that is the essentially that is the meaning you take an algorithm uh, which is specified in terms of uh, the variables and you write that uh, rewrite that in VHDL using the variable and you hope to get a circuit to implement that uh, function you may not get it that is the meaning of it. We will see again synthesis using variables uh, as we go along. So the syntax uh, of the variable um, declaration is variable that is a keyword count and integer is an internally defined integer uh, integer. Uh, because integer can take a lot of values we are saying range 0 to 255 because our aim is to synthesize a circuit out of this and since uh, this the circuit should have a bus of fixed width we have to say what is the range you cannot like when you say 0 to 255 it is an unsigned bus uh, which is an 8 bit bus. So uh, always uh, you have to specify the range of the variable when you when you specify it so that uh, the synthesis tool can convert this into a bus of fixed width 
and let us come to the files. Files are used in test benches to store input vector and also to write output vectors. We will see the syntax uh, uh, when we go to the test bench but uh, maybe quickly we will see uh, how that is used. Say normally you define a data type called type uh, some name is a file of character. It is a short form of file of character. So, wherever you use logic data it's, it says that it is a it is a file with, with characters inside. Then uh, the way to use the file is give the keyword file a logical file name logical file name or you can say it is a file handler and you say this logic data that means it is a file of character. Then you can say if you want you can say give file this logical name logic data is uh, uh, like in, in codes uh, some file name this is a physical file name in the current working directory you know that is the meaning of it or you can even say file this file handler uh, uh, the logic data is this data type open read mode uh, is physical name file name that means that you open this file in the read mode only only for reading and what is the physical file name you could when you just write the file name in quotes it means that it comes from the current working directory but if you have to go to a specific location you have to give the full path. So, that is how the file is used and when we uh, discuss the test bench uh, we will see it uh, in detail. So, that um, you know talked about uh, the 4 classes uh, basically the signals, uh, constants, variables and files. So, let us look at the data type. There are 2 types of data type one is scalar and the second is composite and the scalar you have 3 types one is enumerated data type um, and one is integer one is float ok the real numbers. Uh, the composite you have array this is very useful record which is not as used as array. So, uh, so scalar and composite in scalar you have enumerated and uh, integer and float in composite you have array and record. So, let us look at an enumerated data type say normally for state uh, machine state diagram uh, we can use this kind of thing you can say type anytime you say type it is a new data type uh, some name and in the bracket you give uh, the enumeration like you enumerate the states like in it comma sample comma weight comma so on ok. These are the states of the state diagram, but internally normally when you say this is for convenience internally it takes a value 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and there are 5 states. So, it will be definitely represented in 2, uh, 3 bits ok that you should not forget. Internally it will be converted to 3 bits and uh, normally the assignment is sequential like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. For some reason you want to change the assignment to some other order uh, this can be changed using uh, the VHDL attributes ok. Uh, we will see that how to do that um, uh, maybe when we take the state machine coding uh, the VHDL coding of state machine is handled maybe some kind of assignment will solve some issue in the uh, in the VH, in the in the in the state that state machine implementation, so at that point we will see how to use attribute to change the uh, this particular assignment state assignment. So let us move on, uh, maybe uh, discuss this and wind it up. So in the enumerated we have already seen uh, the bit and the standard logic and boolean is also there. So this is defined in the standard library. So, type boolean is false or true ok. So, you could have something defined as boolean which takes the value false or true. You can have uh, the bit is defined as type bit is uh, you know 0 in quotes comma 1 in quotes. So, the bit takes only 0 and 1 and this is what we have used as type standard u logic ok. Now, stand, standard logic is little different from standard u logic. So, 
this is an enumerator type which takes you know open bracket u this is the command comma x comma 0 comma 1 z w l h and dash which is do not care ok. So, uh, these are the 9 values the standard u logic can take and let us pick up one by one. Uh, so, u means uninitialized which has no use in synthesis, but maybe when you simulate at the beginning of the simulation if a signal is not initialized then it can be shown as u. 0 is a 0 you know, 1 is a 1 you know and similarly L and H are also 0 and 1, but this is forcing this is weak ok. Essentially it means forcing means it has a high current drive. So, you can imagine an output driven through an N MOS or a P MOS can be thought of as a low resistance drive. So, this represents 0 and 1, but for some reason you have a pull up or a pull down then you are driving a signal with a with a resistor high resistor then this can be treated as weak uh, 0 and 1. And x is when something is unknown suppose you have a line to which two outputs through a tri state gate is connected. Suppose in simulation uh, somehow it happened that both are driving and one is driving 0 one is driving 1 then the resultant value is x which is unknown. So, that is one. So, in simulation can show x is unknown then you can kind of figure out what is going wrong and w is when L and H clashes, x is when 0 and 1 ha ha happens. So, w is a uh, weak equivalent of the, the, the x and z is you know the high impedance and dash is do not care which is very useful in, uh, in synthesis uh, for optimization. So, uh, in principle synthesis use uh, 0, 1, L, H, Z and do not care. Simulation can use everything except do not care. Uh, like if you assign something do not care uh, it does not make sense. Simulation can be shown up like that, but uh, there is no particular meaning in it. But you should know that uh, these are just the values the standard U logic takes, uh, but that does not mean if you specify something as L you will get a pull up resistance or something like that you would not get that. So, this is just the meaning of uh, the standard U logic and uh, depending on how you write um, like whether you write L H or 0 or 1 everything is treated by synthesis tool as 1. And uh, the, the standard logic we have used is a subtype of standard U logic which is going through a resolution function called resolve. We will see uh, as we go ahead what is that, but for the time being uh, you can treat it as exactly same only thing is that whenever there is multiple drive it goes through another function to resolve uh, the, the, the resultant value that is the meaning of it. We will see it later. Uh, so, uh, I think with this I will wind up for today. So, the last part was uh, the data type we have seen. Uh, the classes for classes, um, the variables, constant signals and files, then data types scalar and uh, the composite in scalar enumerated uh, integer and float and we have seen scalar. So, please go through go back and revise refer to the textbook uh, learn it well. Uh, so, I stop here and thank you and wishing you all the best. 